I love me some NCAA 06. I think it's one of the best football games, regardless if it's Madden, NFL, Pro, whatever. It doesn't matter. I think it's one of the best ever made. Now, I want to do a little bit of a deep dive with some of the guys that weren't as popular or guys that were just maybe some underclassmen and so on and so forth. And the first guy that came to my mind was Chris Johnson. In this game, they have him wearing 24. He's a sophomore. Ever since his sophomore season at ECU, he was wearing number five. So I give him number five in his dreadlocks and so on and so forth. Now, in this game, there are 529 running backs. And when it comes to speed, Chris Johnson is number two. And you can probably guess who he's behind. The other guy wears number five as well, and he plays for USC. Of course, I'm talking about Reggie Bush, who has 98 overall speed, and Chris Johnson has 97 overall speed. When it comes to agility, Chris Johnson is the 98th best back in this game. When it comes to acceleration, he's number three, again behind Reggie Bush. And when it comes to carry, he is... 323rd when it comes to carry in this game. He is the lowest running back on his own roster, ECU, at break tackle with 70. And he is 44, 444 in the country when it comes to break tackle. So he's towards the bottom there. But I want to see what would happen if we did a dynasty with them. Obviously, we're going to simulate everything. And then we're going to import him into Madden and see where he gets drafted, if he gets drafted at all. So ECU is towards the bottom. DeAndre Williams, he is a first-team all-conference USA member. And there's no Chris Johnson on the roster at all. I believe his first, he only rushed for 1,000 yards in real life his senior season. Um, so we're going to try to help him not do that here. We want him to rush for a thousand yards this season, junior season and senior season. If he decides to stay, he might have ball out and decide to leave early. Now we did not qualify for a bowl game because we went five and six with Chris Johnson, 228 carries for eight, 846 yards, eight TDs. His longest run of the year was 67. So clearly that breakaway speed is coming in to handy for ECU. But what else did he do as far as his numbers are concerned? What would he do in the kick return game? Because he's also the kick returner and he's also the punt returner and he might even be like the best receiver as well. So when we look at his receiving numbers, fairly decent, man. He caught 34 passes for 459 yards, averaging 13.5 yards per catch and he had three TDs and a long of 64 so he's able to break off long runs after the catch in the run game because he is just that good obviously obviously he is fast when it comes to his uh kick return numbers though they look like this as a kick return he had 48 attempts for 843 yards which is a lot of yards averaging 20 yards per uh kick return Longest one was 61, but he did fail to get into that end zone. But if you tie in all of his numbers, his all-purpose is going to be fairly high. It's going to be fairly high. When it comes to his punt return numbers, they look like this. 34 punt returns, 244 yards. The average is 7.1. His longest one was 17 yards, and again, he failed to get into the end zone. Now, as an impact running back, I forgot to mention this. As an impact running back, he is uh, number 56 at the running back position. All right? 56. I'm going to get more into that in a second. As you can see, Reggie Bush, all-purpose was 3,650 yards. When it comes to Chris Johnson, his all-purpose was at 2,392. His rushing numbers put him at 103 in the country. His touchdowns put him at 70. There was 70 bucks, 70 running backs that had nine touchdowns or more uh, in the country as well. But when it comes to the impact players, Lindell White, his future teammate at the Tennessee Titans, he's the highest overall running back that's not an impact player, does not have that white circle underneath him. And Chris Johnson is one of the lowest impact players at running back. Again, number 56 out of a possible 61 there is 61 impact players at running back and chris johnson is ranked number 56 all right so let's move on we've seen enough of this reggie bush he is your heisman winner morrow from texas that's obviously vince young some guys are named some guys are not named okay don't sue me don't be too mad at me so year number two chris johnson comes back he is a member of the all conference usa first team and he helped us win four games. 
Now, I must admit, I was not really recruiting or anything like that. I was just like, I just want to see what Chris Johnson does. That might have hurt him, but maybe the team decided to put more on his shoulders and that allowed him to, you know, maybe ball out a little bit more. So, we were 4-6 and six, then we lose to Louisiana Lafayette and we end up 4-7, and 3-5 and five in conference. But let's check out CJ's numbers. And this season, he will get over that 1,000-yard mark with 1,076 yards rushing, averaging 4 4.2 yards per rush and he also caught not caught but he also ran for eight touchdowns you can see right there conference usa first team his receiving numbers 22 receptions for 441 yards and then when it comes to his kick return numbers 42 kick returns for 949 yards one touchdown his longest was 94 yards i'm gonna guess i'm gonna just go out on a limb and say that that was the one that he scored on so doing pretty well and when it comes to his attributes he was 70 overall when it came to his break tackle through hard work and dedication he's up to 72 overall when it comes to his break tackle punt returns he had 26 attempts for 201 yards averaging 7.7 .7 yards per attempt or per return and then 14 was his long with zero tds so this season his senior season last year to try to do some to improve his draft stock we're starting off 0-2. We lost to Virginia Tech, but 25 carries, 103 yards, a touchdown, and a couple of receptions as well. Then versus Alabama, who's 3-0, 33 carries, 167 yards, averaging 5.6 yards per carry, showing that maybe he can play with some of the toughest defenses against some of the toughest defenses and some of the best talent in the nation as he did his stuck fizzle. So, 270 carries he ran for 1316 yards and 14 tds for his senior season yet again he's first team conference usa his longest run though was just 21 yards which is kind of surprising just 21 yards with all that speed that's kind of ridiculous now when reggie bush went to the league after the first season of this sim Chris Johnson was still not the fastest guy. There was two freshman running backs that came in with 98 overall speed, and Chris Johnson's speed is at 97, obviously. Receiving numbers, 21 receptions, 436 yards, averaging 20 yards per catch, and four touchdowns. Ridiculous. 77 was, was his longest reception doing his thing. When it comes to kick return numbers, 44 kick returns for 1,072 yards, averaging 24.3 yards per attempt. And then his long was 60 yards. Again, maybe if we had somebody back there that could do their thing in the return game, he wouldn't get so tired because I did turn injuries off, but I left fatigue on to try to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, when it comes to punt returns, he had 34 attempts or 34 punt returns for 449 yards, averaging 13.2 yards, had a long of 80, and took one back to the crib. He done did his thuggest of fizzles. Now, when it comes to his career numbers, 3,238 yards rushing. That is definitely higher than his total, I believe. Again, we don't have his freshman year here. So if you tally up all of his years, he probably has more. But just those three years that we have, it's probably more here than it is in real life. He also received 1,336 receiving yards, 11 receiving touchdowns. Now, he is graduating as an 89 overall halfback. Now, I wanted to see who was going to be leaving early because usually the guys who leave early are going to be your top uh, draft picks. Crawford, uh, Merrick, Ryan, Ryan, <laughs> he's leaving as well. Uh, you got Lundy. Brett Fisher, I believe, is Adrian Fo Arian Foster. Excuse me, not Adrian, but Arian Foster. I believe that is him, Fisher. So we'll keep our eye on him to see what happens with him, if he, he'll he get drafted or whatever. But we're going to be focusing really on Chris Johnson. We might do one with a Foster and get his name right and follow his career um, and so on and so forth. So now Chris Johnson's college career is done. Let's see what we can do. So as the Titans are assimilated, I was going to wait till year three, but that just took too long. And I then I controlled every single team. And that was a mistake because guys like Edge and James are free agents and they're 99 over. Overall, that's ridiculous. So I figured I would just do one season of simming and see what happens. We made it to the postseason. Didn't go any further than the wild card round, losing to the Patriots. So Chad Henney, you can see right there, is the top quarterback prospect. You got John David Booty down there. The other guys I don't think are real guys, or they may might be real guys, but I did not give them their real name. Uh, so, but when it comes to halfbacks, because that is why we are all here, you can see Hall, Sampson, Stewart, Perkins, Battle, his, the, Barry is there, there goes Fisher, there goes Fox, and I'm like, okay, that's cool right there. Yeah, 
looking good, looking real good. And then I realized that Chris Johnson is not here. So I was a little bit disappointed. I was like, what's going on, man? I want to see Chris Johnson perform at the combine. I want to see that crazy 97 overall speed and see how it translates into Madden. And it doesn't look like it will translate into Madden. What I'm thinking is that this is more so based on your overall and not what you did your senior year. Again, this is one of the first Maddens. I believe it was Madden 04, 05, and 06 where they implemented this uh, in Madden. So it might have still been a little bit rusty, but you know, it is what it is. So I looked at the free agents as well. Maybe he was an undrafted free agent. He's just not in the game. He did not make it. He did not make the cut. Again, I want to say it's based off of overall and not what you did your senior year because I thought his senior year was at least least at least a late round pick worthy but it really wasn't it really wasn't so our first pick of the draft will be john david booty 81 overall 96 throw power 83 throw accuracy from usc i believe in real life he got drafted by the minnesota vikings or signed with the minnesota vikings after the draft but i think it was like a fifth round pick and then uh he was wearing number four and then brett Favre came to town a year later and he had to give up that number yeah, that's life, man. So I'm going to do this again with some other guys. I really want to do Darren McFadden, who's a freshman in this game. And I want to see his career pan out. I think it's going to be pretty cool. But that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. Peace, love. Hot sauce.